Mother Teresa, in her own words, book and highlight commentary by Nate Richardson. Chapters, prayer, love, giving, being holy, work and service, Jesus, poverty and the poor, forgiveness, children and the, and the family, suffering and death, missionaries of charity, and a conversation with Mother Teresa. Introductory message from Nate Richardson. The following are a few notes I took on some of the principles Mother Teresa taught. They're often not quick complete quotations but summarized except for when i use quotation marks when i write something in my own insight i preface that statement with note further when the principle fits with something said in another chapter i sometimes move that to be with the other idea from the other chapter so you might not find everything in that particular chapter it's listed under mother Teresa is one of the few people who has the fullest ability to call others to repent to repentance and to live scripture literalism because she herself has lived the scriptures so literally and with such a high level of integrity, sacrificing herself day by day and year after year. I have deep respect for this saint. This is a great book to check in with whenever I'm feeling like I'm doing well. I can review this to be reminded how much there's so much more I can do, which I'm very glad to hear as it pr promises always greater opportunities for joy in Christ, fulfillment of my calling on earth, alleviation of suffering, and the gospel of Christ to save more souls. I am not Catholic, but I appreciate Teresa's devotion to the Catholic Church, as I am similarly devoted to my church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I find applicable principles of the need to sustain God's church. Brilliant Catholic philosopher Peter Kreeft related an account where Mother Teresa was asked by a non-Catholic, Surely God needs good people outside his church too. Teresa answered, No, he doesn't. The man couldn't argue with that, so he joined the Catholic Church. This is true perspective, that God will want everyone to join his church. I do, of course, reject the idea that the Catholic idea of a celibate life without marriage is a higher way. Nuns are, to, are married to Christ, but inasmuch as you marry a Christian, you are married to Christ. In the restored fullness of Christ's gospel, we see Christ, Christian marriage as a higher virtue than Christian cel celibacy. But, of course, the Catholics don't have the full truth on this point, and our hats are off to them for doing what they see as the highest ideal. Surely this sacrifice will be made up to them in their faithfulness in Christ as they know him. Surely they are doing great things for God, and we invite them to receive the fullness of the gospel if they are ready for it. Teresa recognizes that there is a great work to be done in raising children and families, etc. I also reject that all forms of pleasure are an evil, and that any comforts are to be rejected. It is true that our highest goal is to care for the needy, but sometimes on the path of duty, a little refreshment helps us to be renewed and do our duty all a little, all the better. As Joseph Smith put it, unstringing the bows helps it not to lose its spring. This is not to undermine the need for heroic self-sacrifice. We know of the principal doc priesthood doctrine that for those who give themselves in the service of God, God will renew their flesh. D&C 48 but wholesome recreation remains the true principle for a sustained, consecrated life. See the family proclamation, for example. I will confess that Teresa has a level of mastery I will likely never attain in this life, and there certainly is something to rejecting comforts in our labors, particularly to the extent that it helps us live among and as one of those we are called to serve. Teresa would agree to, with this on an to an extent, as she professes, God calls each of us to do different things, though she sees no need for anyone to be called to act outside of God's church, and sees that all would be better off in it, which is excellent, though we agree on which church we all though we agree on which church is God's church. Teresa also makes a comment in this book that her manner of dress is changeable based on the people she is among, that she would be perfectly willing to change that mode of dress to fit the customs of those she labors among if such were more acceptable. So I think sh she has these principles down, and my clarifications are here perhaps not s so much to disagree with Teresa as to precaution people against getting the wrong idea about Teresa's approach. Now onto the book highlights. People were always asking her to slow down and rest. To this she replied, I have eternity to rest. The more we are announced, the more we will draw closer to God. She isn't a great theologian, but she is one of the great she is one with great compassion note but she does as you see have a great sim simple theology full of truth found in service the new testament says that the service that service is true religion 
Mother Teresa on prayer. Jesus said, Why are you sleeping? Wake up and pray. Luke 22. Jesus, Jesus often lets society to be alone for prayer. My secret is very simple. I pray. Praying to God is loving him. If we want to, if we want to be able to love, we must be able to pray. God allows fl- failure, but he does not want to dis- discouragement prayer. But he does not want discouragement. Prayer is what helps us reach our goal of perfectionism. Don't pray long and drawn out, but short, full of love. Mental prayer is greatly fostered by simplicity when we forget ourselves. Prayer is the breath of life to our souls and holiness. It is impossible without it. Prayer, um, pray a mental prayer as you shut your eyes. Shut your mouth and open your heart to God. In vocal prayer, we speak to God in mental prayer. He speaks to us. It is then that God pours himself into us. No. Some say truly but incompletely that if when we want to talk to God, we pray, and we want, and when we want God to talk to us, we read the scriptures. But of course, God speaks to us in prayer, and that is really big. Is a really big time when He speaks to us. I believe most conversation comes through prayer, not reading. Let the love of God take the entire and absolute possession of your heart. Let it become the second nature of your heart. Seek to please God in all things and refuse Him nothing. If you fail. Pray and rise up again at once. If You have to deepen your, your life in prayer before you're able to give the word of God to people who are hungry for it. You learn humility only by accepting humiliations. You will need humiliation all throughout through your life. The greatest humiliation is to know that you are nothing. And when you come to know this by prayer, when you face God... When you come to face to face with God, you cannot but know that you are nothing and have nothing. We cannot put ourselves directly in the presence of God if we don't practice internal and external silence. The internal silence is very difficult, but we must make an effort. That brings unity and energy. Unity is the fruit of prayer, prayer, humility, and love. In the silence of the heart, God speaks. If you face God in prayer and, the, and silence, God will speak to you. Then you will know that you are nothing, and God can fill you with himself. Souls of prayer are souls of great silence. Silence gives us a new outlook on everything, and we need silence to touch souls. The essential thing is not what we say, but what God says to us and through us. If your heart is full of other things, you cannot hear God. If we really want and need to pray, we must be willing to do it now. These are the first steps of prayer, and the last steps of the presence are the presence of God. When our hearts are full, when our hearts are full, our mouths ha- will have to speak. Before you speak, it is necessary to listen. Then, from the fullness of your heart, you speak, and God listens. We cannot find God in noisy and agitation, but in nature. Plants grow in silence. As do plants and stars move in silence. When we have silence in our hearts, which includes silence of eyes, ears, and mouth, God will speak to us. If we are careful of silence, it will be easy to pray. There is so much talk and repetition of in words, and writing our prayer lives suffers greatly due to the lack of silence. Real prayer is unison with God, like the vine to the branch as it says in john we need this to produce fruit whatever kind of fruit or money etc we are cap- are called to produce it is the power of oneness with god there is no prayer without sacrifice and there is no sacrifice without prayer jesus's life was spent on in intimate uni- un- union with his father as he passed through this world and we need to do the same Today, God loves the world so much that he gives you and me to be his love. We need to love him so we, he can use us to share his food, his clothing with, with those in need. If we have faith, we are continually in the presence of God. Compilation, compilation is to live our life in Christ's presence. Contemplation, contemplation is not to be locked in a dark place, but to live but to, but to be living for God. Don't waste your time looking, looking for exter- extraordinary expo- experiences and contemplation. Just live the pure life watching for God's coming as we do his work. Note, yes, we can have God's spirit to be our constant companion, to always be with us. If we don't, oh, back to the text. If we don't pray, 
Our presence and our words will have no power. We need to be completely available to God in every moment. Prayer is as necessary to keep us alive to the grace of God as air is necessary to keep our bodies alive. Knowledge of God pr- produces love, and knowledge of self of the self produces humility. Saint Augustine says, "Fill your yourself first, then you will able to. Then only, then will you be able to. Then only will you be able to fill others." Note: This is true, but not to be confused with the popular trend of excessive self care. Henry B. Iron gave a good talk on meeting others' needs before your own, giving examples of those whose homes were destroyed when Tenton Dam broke, who went to go help others in greater needs than themselves. Um, and note, knowledge of, of the self is also a safeguard against pride. The greatest mistake is to think that you are too strong to fall into temptation. You have to walk through the fire you have to walk through the fire, but refuse to give in tem- to temptation. Note, this is clearly a forgotten principle. Every single person should daily live with the awareness that they are liable to fall and should take the caution in all they do. Every day is a trial. And note, prayer, should, prayer to make loved the one, prayer to make loved the one who is not loved. Words to which do not increase Christ increase the darkness. Prayer for the light to know love and to do the will of God. Mother Teresa, on love. It is better to commit faults with tenderness than to work miracles with unkindness. Note, it seems that as we try to do our best, we make mistakes on both sides of the line, but we must try. Some circumstances do require swift and straightforward rebukes. Failure to show tough love when it is needed is still a failure of love. But generally speaking, most of us err on the side of unkindness rather than the side of tenderness. So this is great counsel, though I must bring up the other side as we live an increasingly permissive society which makes mistakes, low standards with love. God commands us to love him and our neighbor, and he cannot command the impossible. We can harvest God's love any season, and anyone can do it. To love, we do not need to do something extraordinary. We need to love without getting tired, like a continual lamp burning from one drop of oil from one drop of oil after another keeping your lamp burning will recognize Jesus in you and you will recognize Jesus in you Jesus loves us to the limit of the of love the cross we too must love till our deaths a mother of 12 of 12 children last child was terribly mutilated teresa said she volunteered to welcome that child into her house where there are many others of similar conditions. The mother of the child began to cry and said, For God's sake, mother, don't tell me that. This creature is the greatest gift of God to me and my family. All of our love is focused on her. Our lives would be empty if you took her from us. One family with a crippled child called the child teacher of love, as that child teaches love by what they would do for him. Don't try to conquer the world with bombs, but with love and sacrifice. Kindness has converted more people than zeal, science, or eloquence. Holiness grows faster where there is kindness. The fulfillment of the law is to love one another. Jesus came to teach us that God loves us, and he wants us to love one another. This is the intensity of love we put into our gestures that makes them beautiful for God. It is easy to love those who are far away, but it is much harder to love those who are right next to us. Sometimes it is hard for a husband and a wife to smile at each other. Later, she adds, Teresa is married to Jesus, and it is difficult sometimes to smile at Jesus because he can be very demanding at times. We are created not just to seek things, but to love and be loved. Do little things for the sake of the great, big things, which is the will of God. If you are just courage, it is a sign of pride as it shows you will trust in your own powers. Do your best, and that is all. Be humble, and you will never be disturbed. The Lord has willed you here, and where you are, he will offer a solution. No, this doesn't mean don't seek better solutions. Even Teresa did that. Situations where she could be more fully fulfilled her mission where she could more fully fulfill her mission, such as establishing new homes for the poor where there was a great pushback, etc. Back to the text. When we care for the poor, we are touching the body of Christ. See Matthew twenty five forty. When we touch the poor, it makes us hero- heroic and makes us forget 
about our inferiority. Intense love does not measure. It just gives. Charity is an overflow of the love of God from within. The more disgusting the work, the, the more this disgusting the work, the more love will be required to do it. No. Just to be sure that you never sink down to their level morally when you're dealing with immoral people. You may not be able to persuade them to go higher, but you can and always must offer them your example. Back to the text. When we find God, we gain back the, the innocence of our youth, which we had lost. When you found God, go home and bring joy to your parents. A joyful heart is the normal result of a heart burning with love. Joy is strength. The, fo- the poor felt attached to Jesus because they felt a higher power in him which flowed out of him. The joy of the resurrection can allow us to n- not become ever discouraged. Joy is not not just a matter of temperament. It's all, it is always hard. This is why you have to seek it. We may not always be we may not always be able to give much, but we can always give the joy that springs from a heart in love with God. Jesus can take full possession of our souls if we only surrender joyfully. Thus, joy is one of the greatest protections against temptation. Mother Teresa, on giving. Poor people are often very generous. It is a pity that the rich never get to the point of feeling that they are in need. Don't just give from your surplus. Give until you feel it, until you really feel it. The rich who live with the worry of riches are actually very poor. They are only rich if they put their money to the service of others. No. Fools mock the poor, and they say they shouldn't give, but it is the rich who will be brought down to hell. The only authorization authorization scripture gives for rich is, is to serve the poor. Jacob 2. No matter how much we have, giving is an essential element of the righteous life. I am reminded of a story of John Huntsman, who had become rich and generous. He heard people say, if I were so rich, I would give too. But he rebuked this idea and taught there are many rich who don't give, and said that even he gave even when he was poor charity is more of a character trait than something about money she heard uh oh back to the text she heard that one of the families with eight children who had not eaten for days she went to give them food the mother of the starving family went out and came back with only half the food she had given the rest to to her neighbors who were also hungry one little child who had never eaten chocolate and when he finally got a piece he said here take it and give it to the children he gave something very precious to him, and he gave it all. Small children often make great sacrifice to give to the poor. She doesn't allow people to have fundraisers for her. She wants people to give. She wants people to give of themselves. One man who was paralyzed except for a hand stopped smoking for a week and gave the money he would have used for smoke to Teresa for charity. The most difficult thing of suffering ex- of the suffering experience is not being wanted. We say God is loving and kind, but can people see the living proof of that through us? Don't be surprised or preoccupied preoccupied at the failures in others, but rather find the good in them because we are all created in the image of God. We are a community of saints. We are a community of people trying to become saints. One woman likes to wear, who likes to wear expensive clothing asked how she could help Teresa serve the poor. Teresa said a quick prayer and was impressed to tell the woman to buy less expensive clothing and buy clothing for the poor with the reminder of what she would have spent. The woman did all of this and was glad. There is a natural consequence within every person, Christian or not Christian, to know the difference between right and wrong. Note, the Latter-day Saints call this the light of Christ. Our scripture says every person is born with it. And note, Mother Teresa, on being holy, our mission is to convey a living God of a living God's love. No, well put. God's love isn't something we wait f- for God to do. It is something He inspires us to do, and that is a big part of God's love. His influence to get us to love. And no, the first step to becoming holy is to will it. You can run to reach and pode- possess God, but it all depends on whether you want to. The passion of Christ is being relived everywhere, and we can share it in the if. We can share in it if willing. Submission to is more than a duty. It is the secret of holiness. To be holy is to carry out God's will with joy. Note, to have joy in something means you, t- you delight in it. You're eager to do it. Perfect willingness. When it comes to being willing and wanting godliness to take upon us the name of Christ, 
are we willing to and wanting to put aside the ways the world's ways and god's favor of reason we read the scriptures and listen to general conference and read the scripture manuals because we can't reject the world and accept god if we don't even know what god wants do we know what god wants what God's ways are when it comes to eating, dressing, playing, voting, reading, gaming, watching, sporting, dating, marrying, and marrying. This is one of the reasons the role of a parent is so sacred and crucial in God's plan. It is the initial platform for learning God's will to give us agency to choose God's ways on our own. Scripture says that God's ways are higher than our our own ways. I'd wager that they're often at odds with the ways of philosophy psychologist professors doctors popular politicians school teachers friends and even maybe some of the ways your parents taught you growing up it is important to be true in the ways of the church or you won't get as correct information about what god wants from you so you won't be able to become as he is to the same degree and the degree we become like god is to the degree we will be happy as God is, th- by definition, the happy, happiest person there is. So step one, faith comes by hearing the word of God. Learn God's ways, then pray to God that those ways will enter your heart and that you will have the courage to stand up for those ways. You will be tested. But with every test you pass, it becomes much that much easier to be a saint. We are, th- the latter days, or as Hiram Andrus put it, the latter day aints and complaints. Yes, it can be hard to follow God. It can be very lonely, but the alternative is so much worse. Surely hell is a lingering realization of what you could have been, but failed to become. You also study doctrine because you need to know the rewards involved. I can't tell you, but the bishop the bishop can't tell you. We have to find it. It's sort of a top secret. Get active about knowing your religion, what it wants you to do, and what it has in store for you. When you know, it becomes a joy to lay down the old life and take up the cross has to do with learning how terrible and real hell is and how wonderful and real heaven is. you got to figure out all those mechanics. And no. When you say you want to be holy, you are saying you will dive yourself of everything that God is not of. It is to empty the heart of material things. When you say you want to be holy, you are saying you will... Christ tells us to aim very high, not to be like Abraham or any of the saints, to be like our Heavenly Father. Gandhi says if Christ were to live their, if Gandhi said if Christians were to live their Christian lives to the fullest, there would not be one Hindu left in India. Saint Francis said each of us, each of us is what we are in the eyes of God, nothing more, nothing less. Note there is a trend, trend there is a trend today to hyperflate self-esteem. In The Collapse of Parenting, Dr. Leonard Sachs points out that many youth today are so often told that they are awesome that when they graduate college and fail in their market, they learn they aren't so great as everyone told them. We must be honest that we give people feedback. Polite, but not inflated. Of course, the other side of this this is that everyone needs to know that God sees uh, sees potential in them and loves them as a parent loves its child. But this love, but this love from God isn't to be confused at his, as it's popular, popularly is with the idea that we don't need to do anything or we don't need to take any, uh, take our fault, fault seriously, ever seeking improvement in this daily probation we call life. Live each, oh, end note, live each day as though it was the first day of your conversion. We cannot be renewed without the humility to realize what needs to be renewed in ourselves. Note. Great point. People today wonder why they haven't seen the face of God yet. Disappointing teachers just tell them not to worry about it. These people fail to understand and teach that we must perfect ourselves before we see the face of God. People today don't want to admit that they aren't perfect. They fail to admit that God's ways, God's ways are higher than their ways. They can't imagine anything about themselves that can be improved. Humility is a concept which is entirely at odds with today's politi- politically correct culture of entitlement where everyone mistakes the universal love of God with the non-universal approach, approach and higher blessings of God. They hear some preacher, teacher, or parent pumping up their self-esteem about how wonderful they are to the extent that they couldn't imagine how they could or should be any better than they currently are. Surely today's self-esteem culture is toxic and spiritually damning. 
being happy with God now, oh, end quote, or note. Being happy with God now means loving like he loves and helping like he helps. Jesus is going to do great things with you if you let him in and if you don't interfere with him. Be very strict with what you are receiving from the outside. Beware anything that takes you away from the reality of what you have given to God. Note, again, beware the self-esteem hyperinflation. It's just as big of a problem, if not bigger, of self depreciating perspective and note we must not be afraid because god loves us and will continue to help us when we understand the tenderness of god's love there is no need to, for us to despair if we are very unlike jesus we have very little love compassion and kindness note we have failed character traits on the other side of the spectrum true we failed to be exact we failed to teach appropriately high standards we failed we failed to hold ourselves accountable we failed to acknowledge the holy standards of a righteous God. As Joseph Smith taught, God is more willing to forgive than we know, but also more strict regarding sin than we know. And note, the work of moral rearmament is carried out with discretion and love. The more discreet, the more penetrating it will be. You give to others and they absorb it. Note, I recall the teaching of Elder Holland that surely the things that God must love being most about God is the thrill of being merciful. And note, sustain the temper by our prayer, penance, and love. Encouraging, lightening words when the opportunity arises. Encouraging them to bear suffering for the world. Love, tr trust, loving trust means confidence in Heavenly Father, even when everything seems a total failure. Walk in total freedom, daring and fearless of any obstacle, trusting in God, knowing that nothing is impossible with God. Feel a little, feel like little children, totally, totally convinced in the goodness of God the Father. Faith in God is to go through life peace, peacefully like a child with his hands in his mother's with no fear or anxiety. When you learn that God exists, you learn that you must live for him. Mother Teresa, on work and service. God doesn't demand our constant attention, just our willingness and effort. We are the wires. God is the current. We can let the current pass through us and use uh, and use us to produce the light of the world, or we can be refuse or we can refuse to be used and let the let darkness prevail. Perhaps you can you can read a newspaper to a blind man or babysit a family's child for half an hour. So many things are so small that we forget about them. Everything we do can involve thought and importance, even the little things. God is not asking how many books you, you read or how many miracles you worked. He will ask if you've done your best for the love of him. Even if our best is failure, it must be our best, our uttermost. If you are in love with Christ, no matter how small your work, it will be done better. Your love will prove, your work will prove your love. You'll be exhausted with work. You may even kill yourself, but unless your work, work is interwoven with love it is useless to work without love is slavery service serve god whenever you feel called to whether that's feeding the poor or changing social structures etc never think in terms of crowds think in terms of individuals that will inspire work i believe in person to person encounters it's difficult to see when people are drunk and shouting that this is jesus is in his distressing disguise we must be clean and loving to bring compassion to them we must be pure in heart to see jesus in the person of the spiritually poorest it is an honor to serve christ in the spiritual poorest and should be done with reverence and the spirit of sharing freight saint francis of assisi was repulsed by lepers but he overcame it when you help someone cross the road or give them a glass of water. You do it to Jesus. Be ready to be t d detached from the work you are doing for Christ. It is not your work. It is his. The talents God give, give, has given you are not yours. They have been given to you for your use for the glory of God. Be great and use everything for the, glitter, for the glory of the great master. Note, it, is appearing she, it appears she is teaching us to allow to loose to accept suffering in the work it would be okay if something goes wrong while we do are doing the work 
When Brigham Young saw the temple, he and his people sacrificed so dearly to make and serve in being burned, he said essentially, good, let him have it. Another part is t- point to be made is that when we join in the work of God, in addition to trusting all to God, we also become personally invested in it, making God per- making God's purpose our purpose. We are joining the family business. If we are meek and humble, we will learn to pray and therefore belong to Jesus. Therefore, we will believe and love and serve. If you pray, you will have faith. And if you have faith, you will naturally want to serve. When you have faith, you want to put it into action. Faith in action is service. The fruit of love is service. The fruit of service is peace. We should all work for peace. Politicians spend time on their knees to become better. St- Politicians should spend time on their knees to become better state- statesmen. Prayer, St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be counseled as to counsel, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Mother Teresa on Jesus. Mother Teresa on Jesus. Don't pass around, don't pass by the cross. It is a place of grace. There is a story of a little robin who saw Jesus on the cross and flew around until he found a way to remove just one thorn, and in the process was pricking himself. Be like that little robin, finding something you can do. And it will probably hurt. We all have to carry our own cross if we are are to reach the summit with Jesus. We must be emptied of ourselves and be Jesus' love and light in the world. Mother Teresa has a vow chastity where she does not marry and focuses instead on her devotion to God. Chastity is not just absence from marriage, it is to have love for God. Note, the Latter-day Saints know that marriage is a part of the law of chastity and is holiness to the Lord. Inasmuch as you marry a Christian, you marry Christ. Teresa, Teresa was being the, st- being a saint the best way she knew how. And no. Love, in order to survive, must be nourished by sacrifices, especially the sacrifice of love. The more we announce, we announce the more, the more we announce, the more we love God and man. You have just, you have been created for great things. You must not be afraid to say yes to Jesus because there is no greater love than his love, no greater joy than his joy. We can be there for people, even those who resent our presence. Jesus, in the form of the least of these brethren, is hungry not only for bread, but for love, to be t- taken into account. All that Jesus asks is for us to give ourselves to him. Note, this might sound like a lot, but it can be very peaceful a very peaceful way when you consider the alternative. The world pressures you to be something you aren't, to strive for less meaningful things. The world is constantly pushing us around to do things contrary to our divine nature. The miracle takes place when we give ourselves to God. Our lives become so much more than when they would have been otherwise. And all the the while, even in the starving, peace to which the world cannot give. And note, we must be totally available when to Christ whenever he comes to us. Sanctity is in, is Jesus in you. Mother Teresa, on poverty, I'm the poor. God did not create the poverty, we did. Poverty is not just hunger for bed, bread, but for the dignity of human love. In some countries, poverty is more spiritually involving loneliness, disparagement, the lack of mean, and the lack of meaning in life. It is difficult to remer- remove the spiritual hunger of a person who feels shut out from society. Don't just be concerned about the poor who are far away from you. It is more challenging to help the poor that are near to you. It is not enough to know that the know the spirit of poverty. You have to know poverty itself. Pa- poverty means not having anything. Christ voluntarily became poor even though he was rich. Those we aid are poor by f- force and we are poor by choice. No. Teresa is someone who truly understands this voluntarily. It is how people it's how people she serves knew she was the real deal. And no. Spending lots of money on food and clothes clothes is trifling. No. Simple foods can give great health. Simple clothes can too. Our bodies weaken when constantly cushioned. And no. 
Re remain as empty as possible so the Lord can fill us up. Rigorous poverty is a safeguard against our possessions, keeping us from sharing. Note, true, it is good to, ha it is good to have much if you give much. As Jacob too says, the only justification for riches is the desire to better serve the poor. Catholic philosopher Peter Kreeft, a huge Teresa fan, speaks of a core Christian value being poverty, that the world tries to take us from that virtue by instead insisting that we focus on wealth rather than God, service, holiness, not knowledge, mo and modest things, etc. His book, Culture War, is terrific. End note. Religious orders historically have made the mistake of transitioning from serving the poor to serving the rich. No, this is consecrated life. It is to seek the interest of others as much of your, as, as your own. It is as Brigham Young described Zion, that we all live in tents until everyone has a tent. Then we all live in huts till everyone has a hut. Then we all live in cabin till everyone has a cabin. Thus, we progress together. Pover oh, and no. Poverty is love before renunciation. To love is necessary to give and to be free from selfishness. When we are poor, we can work with the poor, and they say, it is very hot. We can likewise say, we are too, experiencing the heat. As they go bare for it, so do we. We stand in line for food as they, and only have a bucket of water as they. For us, there is no fasting. There is only giving food as we receive it. Note, this is a very good point on fasting. Teresa says, we don't fast now and then, we fast all the time. Fasting is better if it is more continuously humility than it is of occasionally starving and living high on the hog the other 95% of the time. <laughs> Hugh Nibley said we should always be fasting. This means we should live a humble life, always giving of ourselves. We can do the occasional complete feast just as we do the occasional treat and the occasional meat if we wish. But the point is to typically lead a humble life. This is not to detract from the church practice of once a month going 24 hours without food or water and giving those funds to the poor. This is to add to or make and make holier that sacrifice. It is, of course, the, a free will offering, and we set the bar set the bar low for general church membership. I am aware of multiple accounts that attest to the leadership, leaders of the church fasting more than just once a month, and of their humble lifestyles when it comes to housing, personal spending, and so forth. I'm not saying all church leaders live humble lives. I'm saying many do, and that pathway of holiness is not narrow but open to all who wish for it. Nibley always says, taking more than you need is stealing. More than enough is more than enough, and it doesn't belong to us. All belongs to God. There's no such thing as earning or deserving or being entitled to more than you need. This doesn't mean the government should crush the rich. It means we should voluntarily recognize God as chief souvenir and choose to live in accordance to his will. Only the voluntary charity system can a person maintain his personal dignity and motivation to continually continue to produce at his best. And no. Patched clothes are no disgrace. It is said when Francis Saint Francis of Assisi died, his clothes were so patched that the original cloth was no longer there. Jesus told the people the good news after he fed them. One mo one woman Teresa picked up in the street looked very hungry. Teresa gave her a bowl of rice, and she just stared at it. She couldn't believe it was rice. She hadn't eaten in so long. No, a person can only live on water for multiple months. And no. It is perhaps in our homes there is no one naked or hungry, but there could be very well someone deprived of attention or affection. Also, consider your lonely aged father or mother. Abandonment is is an awful poverty. All the homeless are someone's children, and we're all of that sometime. Note: I remember the song from Les Miserables called "Turning." It reads, "Did you see them going off to fight, children of the barricade who didn't last the night?" Did you see them lying where they died? Someone used, the, used to cradle them and kiss them when they cried. Did you see them lying side by side? Who will, wake, who will wake them? No one ever. That is the end of the lyrics for our purpose here. Of course, they, they will be awakened by God, their Father, in the resurrection. But the point is that we fall so far short of giving the help people need, forgetting that all precious children... And the suffering and shortness of life is a bitter fruit of our selfishness, corrupt polit political philosophies, and so forth. 
One person became apparent seeing the suffering of anyone the age of your child becomes particularly painful as you consider. What if that was my name of your child? This is why I believe that being a parent can bring upon a person a sense of compassion which no other system can. A parent pours their entire life into the well-being of their children and receives tremendous tremendous affection from their children. Tearing that apart is to tear apart the parent itself. And note, when you know people, it causes you to love them, which causes you to serve them. What the poor give to us is more than what we give to them. The standard of, for judgment of all all people, Christian and non-Christian alike, is how we treat the poor. Therefore, the poor are the hope of humanity. Mother Teresa on forgiveness. Whatever our religion, we know if that if we really want to love, we must first learn to love. We must first learn to forgive before anything else. Confession is where where we go in sinners with sin and come out sinners without sin. Confession is where we allow Jesus to take from us everything that divides us from him. Knowledge is necessary for confession. This is why the saints could say they were criminals, because they saw God, then they saw themselves. When the saints looked upon themselves with horror, they really meant it. What appears to be a stumbling block can be a rock for us to step to step on. Knowledge of ourselves helps us rise up, because when we see our weaknesses, we know we need God's help. We need, when we take the or chest sacrament we pledge to take jesus literally to literally help the poor note though the latter-day saints don't see the sacrament as actual flesh but the uh, as symbolic flesh a token of covenant the symbol teresa here is teaching uh, is teaching is brilliant we are to literally commit to literally do what jesus would do the holy communication is uniting ourselves with god the saints understood this, and they could spend hours per preparing for it, and hours giving thanks for it. Mother Teresa, on children and family. I will take any child, day or night. Just let me know, and I'll come for him. When Only, only when love abides at home can we share it with our ne- next-door neighbor. You'll be able to say to them, yes, love is here, and be able to share it. Teresa took in one little girl off the street, and each day the little girl would run away and later return. They found out she was going to her mother, who lived in the street under a tree, where she had put two stones and did cooking. Teresa asked why she kept leaving when she had had more with Teresa. The little girl said she loves her mother and cannot be without her. Thus we see there is more happiness in being with mother than there is with having many possessions. When she was with Teresa and the sisters in the home for the... For poor, for the poor child, did sm- not smile. But when the child was with her mother in the street, she could not stop smiling. Why? Because they were family. Note: Similarly, parents must be willing to have vocation which allows maximum family time. Ideally, father father would work and mother would be home, or father would work a job which allows children and perhaps e- perhaps even mother to work alongside him as such the classic family self sufficiency farm. The family business is sadly increasing unpopularly, unpopular, but many families end in divorce because dad is gone so long and provides more and more money that father becomes sad, mother sees he isn't the man I married, and by and by, divorce ensures. So, ironically, in an effort to provide for the family and show his love by provision, the father gets less time with the family, and the ultimate tragedy, tragedy divorce, often ensures. So, families... So fathers, don't chase the dollars. Mothers, don't push the father to chase the dollar. Mothers give up career for careers for family, but so do fathers. As fathers often must take the more stable, family-friendly jobs to provide than jobs they themselves could live off of, which might be more appealing to them were they not providing for their temporal and spiritual needs of their family. For more great reading on this topic, see Warren's Farrell's Boy Crisis. Teresa was in the neighborhood where there were no children. One lady was pushing a baby stroller, and Teresa went over to see the child. But to her shock, it was not a child. It was a dog in a stroller. She said she hated to see a dog take the place of a child. She said, perhaps, she said people are afraid of having children. Children have lost their place in the family. Children are very lonely not having anyone at home to greet them, so they go back into the streets. If the mother is home, the children will be there too. To bring the children back home is a beautiful thing to do for god note families must sacrifice to have a mother in the home for the sake of the children this is forever and always the primary role of woman and it is and its glory is not understood
and no. Children are a sign of God's love. No one should dare t- to take human life. No, she is here is referring to abortion. She hates abortion. She hated abortion. And no, the life life is the life of God in us. Life belongs to God and we have no right to destroy it. Mary offered her body to form the image of Christ. When Christ when when children are killed before they see the light of day, it is a great offense to God. She promotes family planning, particularly among the poor. Note, this is certainly a difficult issue, and it does not seem to wise for people to have a child out of wedlock. It is unwise, even sin- sinful, to have sexual relations outside the contract of marriage where children will get the care they deserve. We do incur- encourage married couples to have children, even when financially it doesn't make sense. Having children is a leap of faith, fi- fi- faith financially in every other way. Particularly, these corrupt times... In these corrupt times, young couples will always get pushed back from folks encouraging them to delay childbearing. And no, Teresa continually took in more children. Her homes were always full of children. Today, the world is upside down because there is little love in the home or time for children and each other to enjoy each other. This lack of love causes much suffering in the world. Everyone today seems to be in such a terrible rush, anxious for greater development development and greater riches. Children have very little time for their parents, and parents have very little time for their children and each other. So the breakdown of peace in the world, in the world begins at home. Today we are so busy th- that when it comes to children, they are not welcomed with a smile. A family that prays, that prays is a united family. Families get broken because they do not pray together. A mother, her mother was usually busy all day long, but when sunset drew, she near near she hurried her tasks in order to be ready to receive her husband. No matter what happened, she was always prepared to, with a smile, to welcome him. Help children live today so that when tomorrow becomes today, they can face it with greater love. Children can only learn love when they see their parents' love for each other. People who really and truly understand each other are the happiest people in the world. The poor who have little or nothing are often as happy as they love their children and their family. Note, remember in Fiddler on the Roof, Tote says of his poor newly read daughter and his new son-in-law, they are so happy they don't know how miserable they are. And note, Jesus was born in a family and stayed in Nazareth for 30 years. He'd come to resume the world, yet he came... He, he spent 30 years in Nazareth. During the humble work of an ordinary person, they spent all those years just living out family life. Note, terrific point. Every, everyone, high or low, must join together in the central element of life, the family. We could also point out that, in all probability, Jesus was married with children of his own. This, is, of course, is hidden to the Catholic Church and to most, most other churches today. Another important point is the simple trade though jesus was learned in law and so forth he lived a humble life as a tradesman in the ideal society everyone would likely have a constructive trade and both study and teach on the side voluntarily mother Teresa on suffering and death the prize with which god rewards our self-abandonment is himself Teresa considered the suffering others to be much greater than her own a terrible monsoon disaster brought about sharing as people donated food and clothing from everywhere. Suffering will never be completely absent in our lives, so don't, don't be afraid of suffering. Suffering in itself is useless, but when we share it as the love of God, it is a wonderful gift. The passion of Christ ends in the joy of the resurrection of Christ, so when you suffer, remember that the resurrection will come. Teresa called adds the leprosy of the west on christmas day she opened a house to care for the aids patients as a gift for jesus's birthday no it is high time we start stop treating christmas like a time to receive and more like a time to give of course there can't be giving without receiving but let's involve our children more in the giving aspects and let's not get too carried away in fr- frivolousness giving to the rich but seeking for the poor to give too Yes, it is good for children to have happy expectations of of a gift, but bad if that desire for things consumes them. We must teach them balance. We must teach them Christmas Day is about, above all, other days is a day to serve. I remember on my 
mission, we went out in the rain to knock on doors Christmas Day to seek people to teach of Christ. My companion thought this was most day strange and wanted to take the day off. And no. When when you have a headache, remember Christ Jesus remember Jesus's crown of thorns. When you have a backache, remember Jesus is being scro- scrooged scrouged with the whip. When your hands and feet hurt, remember the crucifixion. Re- love and sacrifice to the point of hurting. Note, in today's culture of excessive self-care, people are allergic to the idea that they should encounter any sort of discomfort as they care for others. They place their own hyperinflated needs as a paramount, and only a sliver of their attention remains to share with the poor in spirit, the poor in mind, and the poor in body. Note, this is a little unrelated, but perhaps can help teach a message. My brother was an a military, an elite military program, I remember having a conversation in him where he told me, you don't stop when it hurts, end note. Death is the final analysis, is the quickest and easiest means to go back to God. We come from God and we go back to him. Death is our, like our coronation and, we can, and it can be beautiful. We miss them, but they're back with God. We are all means to go home to God when we die. One person was dying at a young age and asked why. The reply came from a co-worker that God wants you, not your works. The dying young Christian lady was perfectly happy after that. Mother Teresa, on missionaries of charity. To be a missionary of charity, you need to help with the mind and body to have a good sense of a joyous demeanor and the ability to learn. Teresa, from a young age, felt a calling to be a nun to to the poor and then from age 12 to 18 she lost that desire but at 18 she joined the nuns and had never regretted it knowing that it was god's will for her our prayer is our our works is our prayer because we can carry it out in christ note good point like the arabs who say allah with every shovel of dirt they scoop so we should seek dignity and service in every element uh, of our lives. The choice we make each day ought to reflect our prayers to do God's will, not ours. And note, a vocation is not a means. For a Christian, a vocation is a calling. Note, though of course fathers have the primary duty to provide for the family and jobs are needed to bring in income, but what Teresa is saying is true when we see any wholesome job as service to Christ. The garbage man is taking out the garbage of Christ and the building is the builder is building for Christ, etc. Of course, we must obtain any questionable business practices. And note, when we say yes to God, that means we surrender totally without counting the cost, without any examination, without asking if it's all right or covenant. Note, this is like Brigham Young, who said when God commands him to do something, he never counts the cost. He just d- does it. He lost his name and all his possessions four times, as I recall, might be more in the pursuit of Christian duty, particularly missionary postulating. And note, we don't make plans, there's only today. Note, we live to the fullest today, but that doesn't mean we don't prepare for tomorrow. And note, we accept whatever God gives us, and we give whatever God takes. Read John, St. John's Gospel and see how many times Jesus uses the word Father. Note, In the whole New Testament, Jesus says Father 132 times, all but but 11 referring to God. In John, Jesus says, My Father, 34 times. We must empty ourselves so God can... Oh, end note. We must empty ourselves so God can possess us. Give yourself fully to God because God gave himself fully to you. We would be truly poor if we did not have the power to give ourselves over to God. You can't learn humility from books. When people resent you, that is the time to be compassionate. Except that joyfully we need to die daily in order to bring souls to God. We must pay the price Christ we must pay the price Christ paid for souls. We must adapt ourselves to any culture we are called to serve in. We must be willing to perform in any labor or toil or sacrifice in our missionary life as we fight against our own ego and love of comfort. The church needs warriors today. Our war cry needs to be fight to be fight not flight the church needs saints today serve 
in prisons and abortion clinics to save people from those things. Sometimes we fight for justice when the people right in front of us is dying of hunger. There are different options for the people of God to serve in, but serving the poor crosses all barriers of creed and nationality. Gathering street children, cleaning them, feed them, then teach them to make the to make them ready for regular schools. When one of the sisters is in a bad mood, Teresa does not let her go to the poor because the poor don't need our bad news. They already have enough bad. We must work hard every day to conquer ourselves and ask Jesus for the grace to love one another. Every evening after they work, they gather in a chapel for an hour of silent adoration. The poor are great people. They can accept very difficult things and don't grumble. When you walk past a poor person, do nothing, and do nothing, it indicates a lot of faith, because if you really understood that that person is your brother, you would help him. People don't know compassion. People don't know the greatness of all human beings. People only have three, they only, ha- they only have three simple outfits, and they eat very simple food. They mend their clothes and take very good care of them. They bathe only in a bucket of water in small bathing rooms. They refuse to eat in the houses of the people. They refuse to have radios. They sleep on hard beds. They travel by foot or simple train. They kneel on the chapel on thin rugs. They relish cleaning toilets and dirt as though that was the most honorable thing to do for God. Their lives are meaningless and utterly wasted if seen only in the light of reason. But looking at Christ in his poverty, their life has great meaning. When we look at the cross, we see how much Jesus loves us then, and when we look at the tabernacle, we see how much Jesus loves us now. If you love God, it will be easy to give yourself completely to him and give him to everyone you meet. God loves us and chose, has chosen us for a purpose. We aren't just a number filling a place. A Conversation with Mother Teresa Is it easy to serve the poor? You need prayer, sacrifice, and to see Christ in the poor continuing to suffer the sorrows of his passion. It can be hard to get deprived people to live together in peace, so we all we do is give them our testimony. How many? How do you get so many uh, vocations, meaning workers? They come. Do they all get the materials you need to care for the poor? The needs are always greater than what we have. Why do you keep opening new centers? Because many volunteers come and they aren't to be hidden in covenants. What critica is there for opening a home? We must have been invited by a local bishop to do so. Present requests for help are far surpassed our ability to meet them. When they go, when they get an invitation to open a host, home somewhere, they investigate the in, in conditions of the poor as they go, uh, of the poor there, as they never open a home for the reason other than to help the poor. What importance do you give of our outward appearance? Very little or none. We modify our clothes if that makes us not accepted where we are serving. We would adopt another form of dress if it is better better accepted by the poor wherever we are called. What gives you strength to carry out your work? Learning to see Christ in disguise of the poor. Faith makes this calling easy, or at least more bearable. Without our faith, work would become an obstacle for our religious life because we come across blasphemous wickedness and atheism at every turn. Note, this is a fascinating fascinating point, that a perspective of faith can shield you to protect you against the hard things you encounter while on your mission. Saints serving in the ghettos, especially in the spiritual ghettos, there is one, there one encounters may evil indeed. Surely, constant prayer is needed, and great tact. I do think there is a difference when preaching. The lowest morals and often are often only received in the least instructed, and want to kill the prophet who declared a fullness of God's will. It is true that prophets must declare truth to all, but some shut them out for this, and we won't bother them for other, forever. The DNC speaks of members of each kingdom ministering to the kingdom next below it, but not further down. We recall that the Lord commissioned workers in the spirit's world pris- prison halls, as he could not go there himself. We also see that typically the Holy Ghost is the God who ministers to us in this celestial world. Occasionally the Son of God, and very rarely the Father. But each represents the next. All are gods with different but united roles, all working to bring all who will into God's kingdom.
Perhaps we pass through seasons of helping on each level. One problem I have seen repeatedly is that among the rehabs for misbehaved youth, the staff in these programs don't enforce company policy and let the kids get away with all manners of rudeness, vulgarity, and bad media usage. The problem usually involves the workers being involved with all this foul behavior themselves and not caring about the kids misbehaving as they do. If the staff would have high standards refusing to go down to deprived levels, they could better enforce appropriate discipline and lift the youth by their examples. And note, do you infantilize? Some instruction is gi- is given to children in groups, and instruction given to adults only when they ask for it. They refer more difficult questions to priests except those related to in their ministry. We are not concerned with the religious belief of those we help. We only focus on how urgent their need is. Is their preference to who you care for? The poorest. Do people return to the streets for more suffering after they leave your home? We try to help them in more than just help. We act under the conviction that every time we feed the poor, we are feeding Christ himself. Some people prefer the life in the streets, and we can't help that. Is medical training sufficient? among the missionaries of charity who care for the seriously ill we help people who don't even have the most basic help note the old saying goes in the land of the blind the one-eyed man is king and note should you care for the poor who have a better chance of survival we care for everyone who needs it we have preference uh, for those who have the greatest need sometimes there isn't much sometimes is there isn't much you can do for the dying we can give them the impression of love do you experience repugnance in the in the face of so much misery? Yes, and the work conditions are often very poor. But better to work around the poor than the rich. The poor becoming sneakily and habitual. The poor need to learn that there is someone who cares about them. Note, there is a happiness that comes from working for the poor rather than the rich. When you're building homes for a simple family, well, th- rather than the wealthy hedonists, you feel much better about what you're doing. So ideally, when we serve in a Zion society, when we rise together, there is no poor among us, and we welcome in whoever will keep the law on work. End note. One official comment that the missionaries of charity were once again, were Christ once again walking among us. The sisters try to per- persuade people with leprosy that they have leprosy, that it can be treated with medicine, and that it's not a curse. They had never had any surplus, but they never lacked what they needed. It often happens miraculously. Anonymous donations from people from all, of all nationalities, from rich and poor, come in. Is it is possible to love God without? It is impossible to love God without loving our neighbor. Some children she took in who were in trouble for stealing at a very young age reported to her that every evening from five to eight adults taught them how to steal they opened a saving a savings account for each child they take in when the child is older he gets higher education if he has the aptitude or train or training in the trades they don't get financial help from the government but they do benefit from good government relations and so far as they need to obtain land for their houses note the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints operates similarly independent polite and charitable and note none of their transcriptable are business business trans- transactions it all goes straight to the poor they declare to the government that these are free gifts and that the government gives them to needs permits they need, trust the missionaries of charity because they know it's not going to their pockets it's going straight to the poor how do they manage to get donations where they they have a register where they list everything they received and intend to use for it. They try to carry out the wills of donors about how to use contribution. Do you ever feel like serving among the rich? The poor are the reason we were born. Love has no other message but its own. When people are upset about how you are giving stuff to other people who need it more, let them, let them call down. You can't reason with them. You can find these notes at richardsonstudies.com.